Yeah. Fuck punchline. Okay, eat me too. Let's eat eat here too. No, let me eat too. Let me eat me too. <laughs> Let's go back um, a to little bit, uh, a little bit um, uh, uh, back to. to you. It, yeah. yeah, is it worth it? Uh, wh or what I want? Yeah, I, I said uh, I, I just Soviet universe. I wanted to Soviet say. It Soviet is, universe. It, is it a was. Universe. It is a different universe. It was yes. a different universe. What? Okay, well, <laughs> what I mean, like I, I thought, okay, I'll just go and see lots of stand up to become a better stand up. Fuck off! I was eating. <laughs> I was paying the full way for two years. Welcome to the Weekly Russian Comedian Podcast. My name is Denis Nikolin, aka Russian Comedian, and every week I have a guest, most likely a comedian, and we talk about the shows we do, our lives, and basically anything of interest. It is not necessarily hilarious, but I sure am trying to make it as interesting as possible. This is a very Russian episode, since it's me and another Russian comic, Oleg Denisov, talk about our experience on Fringe Festival 2018. We talk about our shows, other people's shows, our impressions, occupation, and, you've guessed it, Jews. The episode was recorded on October the 2nd, 2018, meaning a month had passed since August. So hello, my dear listeners. Uh, I'm your host, Dennis Nikolin, and I have a guest tonight, Oleg Denisov, another Russian comedian. And uh, right now we are uh, recording this podcast uh, straight from the heart of Moscow, from some anti-cafe, and it's been really hard to find a more or less quiet place to record this podcast. And we have like lovely uh, cups of tea, lovely pots of tea, and even cookies right now. Yeah. So. Uh, it's going to be a lovely evening. So, yeah. Alec. We just kicked out a, a weird bearded man with a musical instrument with no recognizable name. So It, it looks like Uf UFO, right? Uh, yeah, it's, it was playing on UFO, like a turtle's yeah, like on the back <laughs> of a turtle's turtle. Turtle's shell, yeah, turtle's <laughs> shell, basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, lovely sounds, though, lovely sounds. Uh, so, uh, Alec, I guess we have something in common besides being Russian. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the only thing we have in common, to be honest. Like, you're bald, I'm, I'm blonde rhymes but anyway yeah and we're comedians <laughs> and uh, this august we went we both went to fringe festival in edinburgh and uh, well it was your second time yes. it was my first time so uh well let's start with you uh, so it was your second time uh how hard it was to uh, for you uh to come there uh for the second time and was it hard uh, to come there for the first time yeah, for, for the f I think that for the second time it, it was, it proved to be harder because uh, I already had some expectations and obviously I failed in many things. So for the first time it was like coming to, you know, to, to a surprise party or something. Like I didn't know any, I, I had never been to like Britain or to any like English speaking country. So I just came with my material, I didn't know how it's going to go. So it was like whatever, whatever I got. Like, now in, when I remember my first Fringe, uh, like, the good shows stick in the memory and the shitty ones <laughs> just erased, you know, it's beautiful. It was last year, right? Yeah, Your last year, fringe. yeah. And this year is kind of the opposite. Like, all the shit I remember, all the good stuff, I, like, think, all right, I probably deserve this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and your experience in comedy is how many years again? Sorry. Uh... Well, I, I, I've been doing, like, really, really, like, uh, a few times a week and, like, uh, paid shows for only for the last year, like, since the last Fringe. Before that, I did uh, mostly, like, open spots for, like, maybe another two years. Two years. In yeah. Russian, mostly, right? In Russian, yeah. And then and I remember you came to us in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I performed for in English for about, like, six months before going to the Fringe. Yeah. Um, so and th this kind of kick-started my whole comedy thing because yeah. like so much so much exposure so much experience oh, uh, this popularity right oh, <laughs> not the popu I didn't say that <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're comedians, yeah so. that's uh, that's that's the right way to do comedy like straight uh, six months doing it in English and then straight to the fringe why yeah. not why not why not, why not? Oh, that's doing, a doing a show at 11 a.m. yes oh, that's a Russian way yeah, yeah. Well, on the first day of my first fringe I had one person in the room oh shit. he was yeah he was a uh, like mostly we chatted <laughs> so it was not much of a was show. it the owner of the venue <laughs> uh no the owner never sees any shows he knows they're all shit <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's well that's edinburgh man yeah that's edinburgh yeah so he was like 
philosophy PhD student and he saw that I had the word philosophy in my show description and so he came yeah so um, it was lovely actually yeah uh, actually uh, and the first time you uh, you went with which organization uh, PBH or last uh, year no or it was uh, just just the tonic just just, just the tonic, tonic yes, sorry, yes, just yes, the yes. tonic yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting interesting 11 a.m. I mean, that's an interesting spot but you know like for, for me it was uh, this year it was mm -hmm. the first fringe and, and, and un un unlike, unlike you I have I have before that I had like four years of experience you know like for uh, yeah. yeah 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 it didn't help didn't help <laughs> <laughs> no I'm kidding uh, it helped but uh, yeah I also experienced that uh, like thing that uh, well I had slightly better spot I had like 2 30 p.m. and I went yeah. with PBH I didn't sell any tickets but yeah on the work days I would usually have like to 10 15 people yeah uh, by the end by the end uh, I had more like uh, uh, 20 25 already on the work day mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. but yeah mostly 10 people but I actually I cherished that because like at fringe uh, especially with the free fringe like when you when you see 10 people on the work day in uh, in the audience like in the room yeah. uh, that means they really want to see you like they came specifically for you uh, or for the show in the next room but they didn't yeah, but they didn't get <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, sure. But it. let's yeah. not let's let's just not discuss <laughs> that. I mean, no one left. No one has ever left yeah. on my shows. And uh, I, I, as I well, um, and, and what about your shows? Has anyone? Uh, uh, when I did like last year, eleven a.m. No, like people. I think if people want to leave, wanted to leave, they, it's mostly because they haven't had enough sleep. Uh, but we had the kind kind of a comfy chairs, and so they kind of got some sleep if they wanted. I mean, uh, that's what the the fringe is for. Like everybody gets what they want, maybe in the end. Oh, apart from the performers, more course. or less, yeah. yes. But this year you decided to do the opposite. Like you yeah. you got the <laughs> 11 p.m. Uh, like uh, slot. 11:40, right? like almost midnight. <laughs> almost dead midnight, dead yeah. slots, as, 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 as they're called. Yes. But I went to your show. I went to your show. Mm -hmm. We went. It went uh, really good. And some people from uh, from upstairs from the bar they also came came yeah. in and joined the party. It was uh, like Friday was night, night. I think it was. Yeah, like it was Friday night. Yeah, I think it was the first. It was the second, second day for me. Second. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, like third or fourth day for you performing there. No, sec like. it was second show at the Fringe, yeah. No, oh, your second show at the Fringe, show yeah, yeah. The Fringe, yeah. Before that, I had like, for, for the first uh, first day, it was a work day, Thursday, I think it was uh, six people. And next time it was, what, like 40 or something, or well, something like that. Well, yeah. Yeah. well I mean, uh, <coughs> I can complain myself, like during weekends, I had the uh, full rooms and uh, I don't want to turn it into competition, but it was just for me as a first timer, like it was yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. pretty good. I didn't expect anything else. You know, for, for Russian listeners, yeah. if you guys speak English and you're listening to this podcast and you want to go to Fringe, well, don't don't be scared by anything. It's uh, all in your, uh, how to say, it's all in your hands, basically. Like, uh, yeah. just please yeah. learn some English. <laughs> and then this, <laughs> this is really, this is really important. But, uh, but yeah, f for me, actually, like... Because you're going to look like a person if you do. Yes. Oh, yeah. They, they Even if you aren't. Yeah, I mean, they like exotic. Yeah. Let's let's say they li they really like exotic stuff, but when it's in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. even if you're Russian, if you have a Russian show, it has to be in English. Yeah, it's like a lobster using an iPhone or something. Yeah, lobster using an iPhone, but uh, in English. Uh, are you talking about like Russian people buying iPhones? Is it like a sophisticated? No, it's subject? just they don't ex <laughs> they don't expect the lobster to use an iPhone as they don't expect a Russian to speak good English. I don't expect lobsters to do anything, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they but expect them to be tasty. Yeah, I've never tried one. I've never tried yeah. either. But, uh, another similarity, yes. Oh, yeah. We're both poor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I did, uh, I did uh, crayfish. Crayfish? Yeah, That's I did crayfish. Like a Russian From Volga, yes. Yeah, Russian crayfish, lo yes. Russian lobster. Russian lobster, yeah. Russian mobster. <laughs> <laughs> Russian mobster, lobster. <laughs> mobster, lobster. Ah, that's a villain from uh, Chip and Dale. <laughs> yes, mobster, lobster. Okay, whatever. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you have to speak English, and like for me, uh, this year was the first time I ever visited any in, in English-speaking country. And since like my uh, my, my like uh, application got approved right in the middle mm -hmm. of June, all of a sudden, even though I applied like in January, like, I had to change my passport. I had to acquire like express visa, and like until the last moment, I was afraid that I wouldn't get it. You know? Yeah. And even when I went, already was in Edinburgh, I was like, uh, still I couldn't believe that I'm there. You know? Like I still. Uh, and uh, the most, like the most uh, difficult thing for me was to uh, accept the truth that everybody speaks English, and there is no other language I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna hear for everybody else because I traveled all across Europe, 
and nobody speaks English there. I mean, they speak English, but it's all like different languages. Yeah. It's like their second language, maybe. And I was like, everything in English? Like what? <laughs> like what? Really? No, no hidden. No. It's like, like the like the insides of my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. But with nicer pavements. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A few less strip clubs. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Inside don't go to those head. strip clubs. I mean, everything in Edinburgh closes at 3 a.m. And uh, yeah, I never I never visited any strip clubs. But in Glasgow, though. Yeah. So what, what was in Glasgow? Ah, it's just shit. <laughs> it was shit, let's be honest. Like, they don't even let them... They didn't even let to touch them. What kind of strip club is that? Glaswegian? Probably. Yeah, I just like uh, Prague. Like, you can do anything there for yeah. 100 euros. But anyhow... Uh, <laughs> You're well-traveled, yes. I have <laughs> never been to Prague. Yeah. You should. I mean, yeah. You should. The cheapest cocaine ever. Anyhow. <laughs> yeah. And so, Edinburgh. Like, the Edinburgh experience, I think, is the most important one in a, a comedian's career. Uh, what do you think? Like, do you think that uh, co comedians from all around the world, that they, they can skip Edinburgh Fringe or, like, um, European comedians, do they... Do they really need to go mm -hmm. to Edinburgh? What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think that really depends on like the culture and the industry of comedy that exists in your country. I don't think that for an American or even a British comedian, like working comedian who performs at clubs regularly, who does uh, emceeing and uh, solo shows, I mean, not everybody chooses to come to Edinburgh because usually it kind of you don't usually make money you you lost money you, you lose money right uh, in America as well there is a, there is a market you go you perform you yeah. you grow if you're talented like if yeah. you're hardworking so but f I think that for a comedian where English is not a first language and there the industry of comedy is not very developed I think it's a must thing like must thing to do like because it, it really like you, you you grow in one month like you, uh, as you you wouldn't grow in like five years i i, I guess i mean so uh, what are you saying like what do you think uh, uh, is the most important uh, thing for a comedian to get out of fringe i mean except for the huge uh, debt uh, <laughs> yeah everybody <laughs> <laughs> found out the, the, themselves in after yeah, it yeah. Because, yeah, about the depth, is, uh, it is a bit of, like, uh, you know, I, I, I've met, like, lots of people over the last two festivals, right? And, and sometimes it's really uh, hard to understand if you're not, like, part of this fringe experience. Uh, for example, like, people are saying, okay, like, I'm doing this, uh, I, I, I've paid for the venue, I paid for, like, everything, the registration, I paid the PR manager to get more exposure. No yeah, I mean, no, I didn't. I mean, people say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, obviously not. Like, yeah, I paid for the venue. Yes, I paid for the venue, yes. but you know, all the everything else I did myself, but uh, including the flyering and everything. But uh, they say like, okay, uh, it's gonna be probably a good show uh, if my show sells out because it's like uh, uh, 8 p.m. and it's a good venue, central venue, it's gonna sell out. And so it's gonna be a very successful fringe for me, I will lose 10 grand. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, well, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, of like, course, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no yeah, problem. T 10 grand uh, in what currency? <laughs> uh, no. Pounds, of course. Pounds, of course. Pounds, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, but you know, they want to get out of it the exposure, like the good press. Like, supposedly, they can make up for it in, like, touring their show afterwards. Supposedly. For, for in theory. For 10k pounds, like, I can become the best uh, comedian in Russia. If I can pay everybody, I mean, 10k is what, like... Yeah, everybody, seven, I will... 7 million rubles, like, or what, like... The yeah, 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 <laughs> just, just, you know, I, I will say that you're the best comedian if you give me 500. Oh, oh yeah, sure, no, of course, no problem, like, 500 yeah. pounds, like, right away, man, <laughs> no worries. Oh, I meant for both. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you cheap fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah by the way you like if, if you're listening in another country i have a fringe debt sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you're listening from another country like russian currency means shit if you come yeah. with any currency except for hungarian foreigns uh, to to russia you basically <laughs> can be a king for at least a weekend like with just 100 yeah. bucks or 100 pounds 100 euros anything 100 <laughs> you know uh but, but yeah, yeah, what i'm saying what i'm saying so um uh, okay, I'll, I'll return to that question later, but you said you paid for the venue and what can you say? So it's uh, your second time mm -hmm. with a uh, gin and tonic and uh, yeah, Just the tonic, so it doesn't matter. Jesus Christ. I'm an alcoholic. What yeah, do you want? Right. So uh, and uh, you twice already you paid for the venue and yep. what do you think? Are the paid venues uh, better rather than uh, free venues? Uh, well, the, technically they are better 
technically they are better, of course, but that's why you pay. You pay for the uh, for the venue to be professionally equipped. You pay for like the the technician works with you, like makes the best for your show, tries to make it the best like experience for people, right? So nothing goes wrong, but it always does. But he tries, yeah. and you, you know this you know this poor fucks. They work like twelve hours a day. And there, yeah. kind of, my technician was basically sleeping in the corner or because I, my show was the last one. So, uh, yeah, but the, uh, they are, uh, and they also, they, there are some like publicity benefits, for example, because uh, uh, you register, you register early on, you uh, like uh, early bird deadline, which is cheaper. Like you register with the fringe program, and then like the press uh, uh, and people who actually read the program, like older people, for example, who don't use internet uh, for some reason, they they kind of know about you. Uh, so I mean, the, the, I mean, the, probably the real question is: Is it worth it? Right? Yeah, that's the kind of they are better, but is it yeah. worth it? Yeah. So, you know, I had like, um, I had to, uh, two times this year, last year I didn't have to, la two times this year I had to cancel the show <laughs> because there was nobody. Uh, you, you did, you, did you do that as well? Uh, yeah, I mean, I had, I had one show like when uh, nobody showed up, but to be honest, I was really happy about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like it was uh, the end, uh, it was Friday first week, and, like only two people showed up. It was like my, 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 my friends, comedians there, and I was like, Oh, okay, let's just go just, drink some beer, you know, like, yeah, yeah, because, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you have, besides your show, like, if you, you've never been to Fringe, besides your own show, if you come with a solo show, yeah. there's, like, there's, like, too many opportunities to perform, yeah. and, like, I, I had, like, at least four more shows, uh, well, three, four more shows a day to, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to do so, yeah, obviously, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, well, that's plus partying, you, you know, and all the kind of stuff, so, you know. And in Edinburgh, of course, you want to party with comedians and stuff, you know, to get reviewers. So, but anyhow, let's <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back. Uh, I told you about like I had two shows which were um, cancelled uh, because they were cancelled, but people still bought tickets for them. They just yeah. thought, all right, I'm already too drunk for that. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to hear an hour of like lecture on Russian <laughs> politics. Uh, this is not what I came here for. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just I just go to sleep. So I mean, there were like uh, I still made like not a lot, but I mean, uh, like I had like six or like eight tickets sold, something like this. So it's still like I don't know, sixty or eighty pounds. Like, Did they know. ask to return the tickets? No. no so it's, it's not refundable. Possible, no. Oh, that's great. Then. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, still, that's, like, still, he got so, some money. So I in some sense, it is it it is worth it. You still make more, I guess, if you g get paid show. It was very very funny because people uh, buy tickets to. Uh, to different show like I was uh, sitting in the front row uh, at one comedy show there like a very funny American comedian uh, and next to me like there was this older Scottish guy with like lots of fringe magazines like, yeah. uh, on his on his lap like and he was talking to somebody in the second row he was saying well I don't really I don't really remember why I bought the ticket to this show I don't I, I think it has a five star review in like the Scotsman or like like uh, something like the list and I don't remember he was sitting there for the whole hour of a great show he never fucking smiled <laughs> <laughs> just never once did you get any reviews uh, I did, yeah. I got uh, four, like t for two good ones and two bad ones. So I kind of uh, first year I didn't get any actual reviews. I got some comments from like people from the industry, like which I could sort of quote. But which industry though? <laughs> 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 because Alec looks like a, a guy from Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. The the one <coughs> with the one with the hair. Yes. <laughs> yes. Exactly. The yeah. one. Hair where? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so they, you get some, uh, you get some. Uh, Stop uh, watching feedback. porn from the seventies. <laughs> Lots yeah, of hair it's there. My, it's my, you know, it's my thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. So you got, you got some feedbacks last year, but four reviews this year, and uh, uh, some two bad reviews and two good reviews. Yeah. And yeah. Are, are you planning to keep uh, good reviews? Because I, I remember you told something about like a guy who came to your show yeah. and he kind of like he didn't understand the, like your joke about uh, grandfather being yeah, a grandfather being yeah, yeah, a semitic yeah. and it was actually a very f uh, fun fun story cuz uh, it was the guy who was the editor of uh, Chortle Co UK he mm -hmm. like the one of like probably if we take just just an online uh, portal is kind of one of the most influential ones and he's like yes. he's like a love or hate sort of guy he's not just writing a review like th two three paragraphs he's just going into detail and this <laughs> joke was actually shit <laughs> kind of like, so it's basically his opinion yeah his like. opinion he's like a, a blogger who got out of proportion but uh, yeah but it is uh, 
uh, a specific a special experience like getting reviews and what what people write. I had this joke about like my grandfather being anti-Semitic yeah. despite the fact that he's only seen one Jew in his life and he was a good guy, but he's still anti-Semitic. Hebrew. Hebrew. Uh, so the, Sorry, the appropriate term is Hebrew. Is it? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a what? It's a language, Hebrew. It's also uh, uh, a nation, Hebrew. Like it's. Like who are Jews then? Jews are also Jews, but I heard like that the it's, ones it's in a, Hollywood are. Just guys, the second it's my second podcast. And it's like again making like uh, not fun, but talking about Jews. Okay, anyhow, yeah, no, it's fine. Well, like, it's, uh, that's your bad ca- podcast. You, you can invite people <laughs> with strong opinions about Jews. What do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, I, yeah, I, so. I was just I was just trying to be a smart ass, but uh, yeah, okay. all right. it doesn't matter, Jew. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so and like it's kind of a simple joke in terms of what it means. Like how xenophobia begins from like having s- seen one person of like them, blah yeah. blah blah blah. Nothing difficult. And in his review, he wrote that uh, the comedians. Uh, uh, the comedian Oleg Denisov holds uh, uh, a hack and uh, hypocritical v- view uh, that all the old people are racist. <laughs> By which he kind of proved the point of the joke. Yeah, you proved <laughs> the, <laughs> the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I mean, since then, since reading that review on every single show, uh, after saying this joke, I saw this experience that he wrote, and I said, okay, he proved the fucking point. And people always got it, so it was always funny. You know, because it is funny. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that, no, that's it's how a funny it goes. joke. It's a funny joke, and I never seen uh, a person uh, like who wouldn't like this joke. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, So we're not gonna do this joke here. But like, if you wanna, if you wanna uh, hear this joke, catch any of uh, like Denisov shows. Yeah, or, it's through yeah. the time machine, preferably. Yeah. Oh, yeah the time machine. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna use it again. Yeah, maybe I will, but I haven't <laughs> since the fringe. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, yeah okay uh i want to throw my 25 cents here because like i went with the um, with the pbh yeah and i cannot complain about pbh because it's my first time and i spent like way too much money on just acquiring the visa so i got like uh only uh into a little uh, wee blue book yeah yeah their catalog pbh catalog of uh, all the free shows and uh, i cannot complain i mean yeah. it was uh, uh we were performing in that nightclub you know, which was mm-hmm. like a nightclub on the first floor and two more floors with uh, like with the uh, rooms there. And they, I don't know, maybe they were using it as a squat before because the rooms were terrible, terrible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like we spent like one day, like all, all the comedians like from that room spent one day, like just cleaning, cleansing, basically, yeah, like yeah. everything and fixing and uh, making it, making it like a proper, proper uh, uh, user friendly, yeah, user friendly <laughs> rooms. Yeah. And uh, it's good actually that I uh, had the 2.30 p.m. slot and I was really sad uh, and sorry for those guys who had like 11, 10, 11 p.m. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's because uh, the music would start pumping yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it would be very, very loud. You know, uh, you had a luxury. Downstairs. Had a luxury in your in your in your room. You had a window. Yeah, I cannot come. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I was a captain of my room. I went for the first time. I was a captain of my room, and uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not bragging, but we had the best room in Barbados, <laughs> uh, because yes, we had a window. <laughs> yeah, we had it's a, a window. Luxury at the fringe. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's a, it is it is, and yeah, I mean, uh, I wasn't like my my purpose there was to become better as a comedian, like to get as much experience as I could. Uh, and it was my first time doing like a full hour show, yeah, uh, like three weeks straight, you know, like 22 times and uh, uh, doing other shows. Uh, and uh, uh, I wasn't looking like I was hoping to get like a review, maybe. But since I wasn't in a, like in a bigger catalog and was more focused on uh, like uh, on um, Doing getting, my physically, shows. getting physically there. <laughs> You're getting physically there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that uh, I, uh, I, I didn't get any reviews though, uh, and and to be honest, I'm not, uh, I'm not upset about it because yeah. uh, I, I think you know uh, the guy like uh, our Romanian uh, peer Victor. Yeah, Victor, yeah, from Victor London. Patrashkin, yeah, yes. uh, Patrashkin. Yes. That's his name because I was thinking Patrashkin, Patrashkin. I was, I mean, Romanian. Yeah, I heard surnames. him say it to girls. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wait, he was talking to girls? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't sucking their blood. Ah, Romanian <laughs> joke. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and he said like he got like a review, three star review from some guy. Uh, and uh, he, he said, he, he, he said, got, he, uh-huh, said uh-huh, he said, yes. he got a three star review from, uh, from, from one um, from a magazine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, basically he said the whole point of the review was, well, this guy speaks English really well. <laughs> 
and since my show was called Bad Russian, and like that was my whole selling point coming for the yeah. first time to Fringe, and uh, uh, I was, I, I thought after he told me, I thought like, what would I got? Like, would I, what, what would have I gotten mm -hmm. there? You know, I mean, oh, this Russian guy, he also speaks good Russian. You know? Oh, thank, oh, good English, good sorry, English, yeah. good English. Oh, thank you very fucking much. You know, yeah. I know yeah. I speak good English. I can perform in, in this language. Yeah, uh, I mean, I was talking like uh, this experience very, very similar, uh, like kind of reflects uh, like sheds a, uh, uh, a new light on like what I was talking uh, to uh, with another for example comedians who are not whose first language isn't English but yeah. some of them for example have you met Luca Cupani is like oh, uh, I heard about him he uh. looks like like me but not menacing it's kind of he's bold uh. but he's like a nice nice bold. maybe maybe look I yeah, met yeah. a lot of met a lot of yeah, but he's there. like yeah, he's yeah. a very experienced comedian he speaks with an accent but he's like been performing in London for like I mean, over five years definitely he's, he's he's not his first fringe and it was like his opinion that uh, it's, it doesn't even matter if you come from Russia or you live in London if you are a recognizable foreigner you speak with a recognizable accent right uh, they kind of uh, the, uh, the reviewers who are usually like uh, older and that's not necessarily older but you know white English people yeah. they kind of patronize you yeah uh, of course so, so and then for example like a joke which contains some irony for example they yeah. would take it at face value they just go oh he, he hates Jews you know like uh, like uh, it's, it's a funny thing because uh, in the first uh, show and in the second show I had this uh, you know bit about where I try to mock the fact that British people make puns a lot and they consider it like the one of the best type of jokes yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and you know like the stupidity of the idea that you can like get a serious subject or like offensive subject and you can make a pun it's not just a pun it's just a joke so I, I do sort of and I prepare people for that I set it up earlier and then I do like um, uh, sort of a ironic pun which is like we're supposed to be bad this time <laughs> it was like a pun on election erection this sort of thing oh okay. yeah 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 because and, uh, and you know I set it up earlier I said like I don't understand the concept and, and, and so and so on and people like usually understand like what I mean right yes, yes. Uh, and two reviewers both reviewers who brought bad reviews <laughs> Well, he's very bad at puns. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Even though it was one pun and it was like supposed to be what, bad. Why yeah. would you, how would you go to a, to a, I mean, you know you're, you're reviewing a fringe show. <laughs> I mean, where is your sense of humor? I mean, yeah, like, yeah, what's, uh, what's wrong with them? But yeah, uh, I mean, so I, I'm not upset. Like maybe next year when I uh, like apply yeah. earlier, maybe like with a different organization, uh, maybe uh, oh, we're planning to go all together, you know, like yeah, whole to do English a, Moscow Comedy Crew, so we're probably going to apply for different organizations at the same time, so yeah. I don't know, maybe like next year, but I'm quite happy with what I got. If you wrote a review about yourself, what would you write? Uh, actually, I got the best review <laughs> uh, of uh, of like of my comedy dur during Fringe. It wasn't a review; it was just a feedback from a Scottish guy after uh, one showcase. Uh, yeah. It was uh, what, what what was the name of it? Uh, the the quiz quiz in my pants. Yeah, yeah. yeah when yeah, I did, yeah, I did, I did. When, this is, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you also were there. Like we we were we were doing it many times. And think, uh, thanks to Nick uh, Nikki Bols. Uh, Balls over. Balls over, yeah. Thanks, Nicky Balls over for Great having surname, us. Great surname, by the way. Yes. Balls over, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> balls over, yes. Exactly, it sounds really Russian, you know. Nicky Balls over, yes. yes. And uh, thanks to her for having us so many times. Yeah. And like after my first or second show, like the Scottish guy came uh, came up to me like after uh, after the quiz in my pants, and he told me like, "Oh, you're a funny fucker." <laughs> Anything I, I, I didn't I didn't need anything else, you know, just like the Scottish guy. Yeah, that's actually the best the, review. It's kind of it's, yes. it, it's informed. Yes. Yeah, it's it's short, which is very good. Next year I'm gonna put it on my posters and flyers. Yeah. 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 His yeah. name is Joey. Joey, thank you very much for coming <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to that uh, to that showcase and uh, yeah, giving me this feedback. We kind of covered the organizational part of of fringe, like yeah. our experience, but. I think our listeners would actually be interested more in uh, why two Russian guys uh, went to Fringe and they're like sort of gone the experience of uh, uh, another country and like this uh, biggest art festival yeah. uh, in the world. So uh, what was the weirdest thing for you as a Russian and also like Russian comedian uh, on, on Fringe? Like what was the weirdest, weirdest thing that uh, you've experienced? Uh, like uh, c connected with me being Russian or just yes just let's start with that yeah connecting uh, with you being Russian yeah uh, well it, it, 
it's hard to say. I think you, I would probably have to look into the into the first one because second time it was like kind of business business as usual sort of thing. Like I really it's really di different, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, mm, yeah, I, the, I I find the most like comedically pr productive uh, are the experiences with audiences, right? And especially like the experiences with. Um, uh, like older older English guys like who oh, come yeah. to the show or like some of them write reviews about the show if they have a uh, and some of them are even so organized as they go onto the Edinburgh Fringe website and write reviews there like audience reviews right uh, and so they're kind of uh, again again it's like the same the, the same topic that I talked about like they they take everything at face value like for example like I remember last year um, uh, just just do, doing some some crowd work and I was like talking about like uh, like, like Kaliningrad is not a part of part of Russia. Like, just I don't know in what context <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, just you know, some play because it like. Physically I completely agree. I yeah, completely, I completely agree. agree. Yeah, yeah. And I think we should like kind of give it to Germany and just yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like take the stadium out and then yeah, take the stadium, take the stadium out, out. You know, because uh, in 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 Volgograd they have floating stadium, <laughs> yeah. and in Kaliningrad it should be like a flying stadium. You know, yeah. like yeah, engines yeah, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I mean, basically one one territorial dispute solved, right? now um yeah well what what can't do russian comedians do after they've been to the fringe right? uh, yeah. occupy stuff yeah. occupy yeah, yeah. Okay. so yeah and i don't remember what context like it was just some crowd or just some banter right yeah. just just or as we call it in russia a banter <laughs> there is a word <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Is, i mean okay throw us a bone it's like almost midnight here <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, and he like he wrote like a review. He he he, he wrote a review uh, on the Edinburgh Fringe website where it says audience reviews, and he says like uh, uh, Oleg's like Oleg's concept of a punchline is a bit uh, maybe a bit too sophisticated for the British mind or something like this. <laughs> Nine out of ten. <laughs> And then, he, and then and then he, and then he wrote, "If Kaliningrad is not part of Russia, what about Crimea?" Just saying. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, is, was he trying to be a comedian? Like, yeah, <laughs> he, he was, I guess. What yeah, about, but the the, po the, po the point is like, um, I mean, I never experienced like any, or a like, poet. I don't know, like it's just you know, <laughs> bad reception like of the fact that I'm uh, that I'm Russian. But you know, I realized that still uh, nine out of ten. Still nine, nine, out, nine out of ten. Yeah. So, <laughs> Fuck him anyway. He's <laughs> yeah. So you know, but uh, I find found it, for example, like if you're any again Eastern European, for example, I had like joke about uh, Marvel films and like Black Panther. And I was just doing like a bit uh, of uh, comparison between how b black people as an identity are uh, positioned in this Marvel films, and then how Eastern Europeans, uh, yeah. which were well, they're not essentially subjects. Of anything right and like there was this bit and whenever i did this i i felt like people's assholes just kind of going tighter and tighter and tighter oh he's eastern european this is gonna be fucking racist <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna uh, this and this and this sounds racist so it is probably is well, he I wasn't mean, wrong <laughs> i mean i mean he, he probably he, he, he hasn't read the dictionary far enough to find the word irony so probably you know <laughs> Or Iron Curtain. Or yeah. I, yeah, Iron Curtain, and then I stopped. So <laughs> Irony is next. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I faced it. Uh, I faced almost the same uh, amount of um, prejudice yeah. against myself. And uh, since it was my first time uh, mm -hmm. um, arriving, like coming to uh, UK to the UK, uh, everybody, of course, was telling me that uh, oh, you have such a nice English, you know, uh, you speak really well. Like why? You know why and uh, it's really hard to explain like you know just uh, what should i say like i'm, I'm a spy i just came yeah. i came from salisbury like what, what what do you want from me like uh, i've been learning it since <laughs> i was five you know just uh, but why why well, how would you explain that <laughs> to them that like my parents didn't want for me a shitty future you know <laughs> and they wanted me to learn uh, the other language you know another language and uh, you know get a better job yeah, but so but it's kind of so has everybody like here in Russia. And, they, and they failed. I became yeah, a and comedian, they and, and they I failed. became a comedian. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, for me it was like actually three weird things. Yeah. You know, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of French. First weird thing is uh, uh, that little uh, Polish joint 
in a, in a Cowgate uh, um, in a Cowgate that uh, like when they learned that I'm Russian they actually sometimes they gave me some meals for free and mm. I was like oh my god Polish people they yeah. like Russian people yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my god <laughs> you know I never told them I was Fuck off! I was eating. I was paying the full way for two years. It's the best joint like the food around. It is. It is. Eat yeah. me too. By the way, that's the name of, of that of the little cafe. Eat me too. Eat, eat your... here too. No, let me eat too. Let me eat me too. <laughs> We're speaking about some other joint. <laughs> it, was, it was. It was some some other nightclub. Never yeah. mind. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but yeah, you should have. But don't worry. Yeah. I just went there okay. twice. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like the other weird thing was uh, for me that uh, actually people uh, would bring kids to my show. Yeah, children. Uh, oh, I remember this. <laughs> 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 like, well, I didn't put uh, our rating on it or anything, you know. But uh, obviously, like it's a comedy show, so you would expect people people swearing. I mean, it's not said it's kids yeah, friendly. Yeah. It's just it's called bad Russian. Like the red Russian in, in, in kids, friendly. kids friendly. Kids <laughs> friendly. You know, like yeah. you know, just just a clown show, <laughs> like you know. It, what the hell and I remember like five kids sitting in the first row I, I can't like uh, I, I stopped flying like I came into the room and uh, I went on stage and I see five kids in the first row <laughs> with their parents and I was like are you sure and they're like yeah 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 sure sure are you really sure like, yeah, yeah yeah sure sure of course I was like what the hell and see okay they were okay with that but I mean everybody was like uh you know, and I was like, Ugh, I can't say like all did the. They, did they laugh? Like, no, the they laughed. They laughed. Yeah, yeah, they laughed. Yeah. Of course, they laughed. But I couldn't like use like some dirty jokes. And, and, yeah, you know, I understand. It was just like, and the third weird thing for me was the Russians. Actually, he came to my show, like once uh, uh, on the the one weekend to the last. Yeah. When it was just um, the Edinburgh was full of people, like it was just the biggest amount of people during Edinburgh during Edinburgh yeah. Fringe, and uh, on my show, like people would come in, come out. It was just it was insane, like it was insane. And I ended I ended up with, with forty people, and like half of the room was okay. Uh, they would smile, they would laugh, they would react. Another half was Russians, yeah, or just Slavs, like Belarusians, like Russians, yeah, yeah, yeah. just uh, just Slavs. And it was so difficult to perform. They were just silent. It was like a shadow of mortar. <laughs> you know, they were sucking out of the energy of the room. Like, no smile, nothing. Like, typical Russian reaction. Like, yeah, but they, after the show, did they come to you and they say, we like that very much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah, exactly. One did. of them, like, one, uh, like, the leader of the, the group. The representative. The leader, the alpha yeah, male. Unelected. He yeah. came up to me, like, I was standing with a bucket, like, just drained completely, you know. And he, uh, he came up to me and he was like, thank you very much. It was funny. <laughs> And gave me one pound. Fuck <laughs> you, man. Fuck you. All right, just count it in rubles. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean it's course. almost uh, almost a hundred. Like, man, the, the, yeah. one lady once uh, gave me like one thousand rubles, and I was like, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, have money one, for a taxi. Now. Yeah, yes. money for a taxi. Yeah, when I come <laughs> when I came back to Moscow, I actually use it for a taxi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what do you think about the whole atmosphere? Yeah, at Fringe. What do you think like the about um, uh, like other shows? Uh, did you go to uh, other shows? I mean, not comedy yeah. shows. Uh, I, I went to mostly to comedy shows like uh, I went much less uh, this year because I was like doing more spots than last year yep. uh, and, and last year I had like I had my show in the in the morning then I, I flyered but it's not really uh, effective and I soon understood like it's not really effective to flyer after the show so yep. kind of anyway uh, we, we know probably both now and I, I saw really lots of shows and it's really good because you can see a really really professional people for essentially for free because exactly. there are many shows are in the one of the best clubs apart from the like four big venues which are holding all the money and everybody hates them <laughs> and nobody really goes there apart from the reviewers <laughs> yeah. uh, because they pay for the like publicity and stuff so i mean like great great comedians great performers just doing pay what you want shows and if it means like if there is a free seat you uh, like you, you on an on, on, on occupied seat you, you occupy it like it's very feels very natural for us yeah uh, yeah so and I saw like lots of lots of good shows over the last uh, over, over the two years and I found that um, like the favorite things like I, I thought okay I'll just go and see lots of stand-up to become a better stand-up uh, I mean I got tired of stand-up very quickly like on the third day of my first fringe yeah and then I started seeing like character comedy like more like physical comedy uh, one man shows one woman shows like storytelling uh, and like they were my favorite thing and this year this year as well, you know Because I saw some great comedians. I saw Glenn Wool for free 
Sorry, Glenn, I didn't, I didn't pay. I pretended to. <laughs> no, it's okay. I was, I was, yeah. Don't stop, don't stop. I'm just yeah, making yeah, an yeah, Instagram yeah. story. Okay. So, uh, all right, Glenn's going to see it now and never going to come to Russia for the second time. Nope. <laughs> but for the different reason. But anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, just... shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you just dropped the ball. <laughs> yeah, I just made a call back to stuff. Yeah, let's, Nobody let's, knows. let's not. Let's not. Yeah. The, yeah. The... So, yeah, I saw, uh, I saw, you know, lots of, lots of great shows. And we saw some shows together, if you remember. Like, we, yes, yes, yeah, we, we did. We saw... Um, Stephen Bailey, which is like a great oh uh, yes, gay, yeah, gay Irish comedian. Yeah, yeah. I, I loved, I, I loved. I don't think he's Irish. He said he's Irish. I uh, think, uh, but he's kind of he's English, but he's Irish Irish heritage. Irish, but Irish he's, heritage, he's, he's, yes. He's English, yeah, I think. And uh, the other guy who was totally the other guy, meta. Mm, yeah, yeah. Sean, Sean Morley. Yeah. Sean Morley. Yeah, yeah, he even interacted with me like when. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There's very it was very diff different shows. One is kind yes. of like stand up joke joke yes, joke yes. joke like crowd work like very very like smooth very fast and the other is basically there were no like all the jokes emerged just from the audience interaction this is the thing that uh but it, at, at the same time it was the sean morley's show like if you ever like you know just go and see it like any anywhere uh fly to england and stay <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, and it was like just it was scripted. It, it had an idea. It has a beginning and an end and a middle. But at the same time, uh, all the interactions were like or appeared completely sort of improvised, uh, and the responses are different every uh, every day, as I, as I imagine, unless everybody was a plant, like, including <laughs> you, Dennis. He gave you before the show. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to you at this point. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I actually give you 500 rubles. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Ivan, is it you? <laughs> yeah, I actually that's uh, like one of the best things I really liked about that festival that there are so many shows you can go to and learn something from them. You know, yeah. well, all these meta shows, which I don't think we can have in Russia yet. You know, yeah, like yeah, I don't yeah. think we're ready for that kind of humor yet since yeah. stand up scene is developing. I mean, actually, like in Soviet Union, we had something similar like with crowd work with monolog artists yeah, i think yeah, we can yeah, find yeah. with writing but right now not everybody uh is, uh, is really very eager new, very new yeah. Yeah, yeah in stand-up i mean like in ge yeah in general in comedy but and, I, and also you don't see it on netflix for example like it's yes a, and especially since those shows are very much dependent on you being in the room like they yes don't really, they wouldn't work yeah. in the video I, I would agree yeah it wouldn't it wouldn't work uh, that much if you just watch it on youtube or something yeah. But man, I I watched some weird shows. I remember. What's the like, weirdest one? Um, well, I not, mean, not necessarily the best. On my first day, I wasn't even like when I was performing. I, I came yeah. two days in advance, like before my show to Edinburgh. Like I, uh, it wasn't really weird, but it was weird for me that a bunch of English guys, uh, uh, well, just UK guys, they were doing a Russian roulette show with. They were improvising on Russian. Uh, fam uh, famous literature, you know, like Tolstoy yeah, yeah, yeah. mainly, and it was fun that I was just like, why? <laughs> it, is a, it was weird for me, but they, they actually made it funny, like it was funny, but uh, the audience didn't get it because not everybody uh, read uh, like Anna Karenina or and it was based on yeah, Anna I Karenina. know this problem yes yeah <laughs> and I read it it was funny for me but like yeah. for the audience like why do you laugh if you because I heard like one girl like I don't know what they're talking about you know, <laughs> just like but it's funny they like uh, the bearded guy like with he with a lot of hair he made me laugh <laughs> uh, the other weird show I went to I was stoned as fuck but um, uh, my friends like they took me to the a magician show you know like yeah. uh, uh, they, lo they love it there because yeah they love of, them yeah they love it's kind them. of family friendly could be some of them yeah so that show was uh, like based on Soviet secret <laughs> documents about uh, experiments on uh, like scientific experiments in Soviet Union Soviet universe I wanted to say. Soviet, it Soviet is, universe. It is it a was, universe it is a different universe it was a yes. different universe Jesus it was it was not is that is a different country now Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Now it doesn't exist apart from in all our hearts. So. <sighs> My friend, comrade. My yes. Comrade, yeah. Iron Curtain. High five. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, when they were um, experimenting on humans to make them superhumans and all the kind of stuff. And it was a magic show. And I was watching it like uh, uh, I was really like focused, of course, <laughs> since I was stoned. <laughs> and I was really watching it. And after the show, I was like, so what? It was just like simple tricks. 
yeah. you know, which you can uh, could have seen like in the nineties in a in a train, you know, yeah, going yeah, going yeah, to yeah, your yeah, country yeah. house. Like it was exactly this thing. Like and in Russia, uh, we had this like sort of magicians, like street magicians, who would go around like uh, trains, you know, uh, outside of Moscow, and they would just do magic I'm tricks. Show you a trick. Yeah, I'm let's show play you a trick. some. Uh, how do you call it? like uh, with uh, with the cups? You know, like bowl the cup on. The, uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, just, just this, uh, this weird like street magic, like. But he was like very like you know, I'm a magician. Yeah, yeah. Secret documents, and everybody was like, oh, it was. Uh, I say it was a really, really good show. You know, it was a really good show. And I was like, Jesus, you can be impressed so like easily. You know, you people don't know. You haven't, you know, been, you haven't you, been to Elektrichkas. Yeah, you haven't been to Elektrichkas. Yeah, that's a Russian <laughs> word for uh, for uh, um, trains. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how do you call it in London? Uh, not underground, but um, overground. Overground, yeah. yeah, overground trains. So yeah, there were several weird shows I didn't go to, like ah, uh, because everybody was advertising their shows on the Royal Mile, mm. and like one girl was sucking Barbie dolls and uh, taking ten pounds for that. I mean, like mm. you would never see it in Russia, but to be honest, I didn't want to. Okay, I went there twice to her yeah. show. Yeah, <laughs> I went, I went, let's be honest, like one hour of. of uh, Sucking, sucking, girl, sucking, yeah. Barbie sucking, bar sucking on Barbie dolls, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah. uh, I mean, why not? But uh, I mean, I, I like cabaret, I like cabaret, I like all this kind of weird stuff. I wasn't, I wasn't surprised by that, but some shows were just like, oh, for me as a Russian, I, I yeah. never, I would never picture it like in, uh, in Moscow, you know, or any other city, you know, in, in, in Russia. Yeah. But like for them, it's uh, a whole c other like layer of culture and uh, I don't know. I, I wish I would go to some more cabaret shows to, because it was really like some of them really good. I I caught uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show cabaret just like, yeah, like yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I, ha I haven't seen, but I've heard a lot. Of that. It was yeah. good. It was good. It was in Frankenstein bar. Everybody was dancing. Like uh, everybody knew yeah. like the moves, the the lyrics. So it was quite fun. But, uh, but yeah, but it was it was weird. Some people were weird uh, in general. But it's fringe. You know, it's an art yeah. festival. It's an art festival. Yeah. Yeah. That explains it. Yeah. If we had Moscow Fringe, uh, do you think it's possible? Actually, uh, do you think it, it, it's possible to have like some sort of a, a Russian, all Russian comedy festival in Moscow or Saint Petersburg or any other place? Uh, I think. Well, I, I mean, there are even in even in Britain. Like this is the big fringe. It's a fringe which like lasts for over three weeks. The right? fringe. The, 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 the fringe. The, it is the fringe. The fringe Turkish, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some reason Turkish. Uh, Guy Ritchie reference. No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, and this, uh, but uh, like every second British town now has their own fringe. Yeah. But sometimes they they just last for like three days or five days, and they just they just operate like uh, they're centralized. There is like a fringe uh, office like or organization. They kind of. Uh, accept applications and they decide like, they give you like the venue or they don't give you the venue uh, so I, I took part in one of those Reading Fringe and it, the experience was great not just for me for everybody because it's basically you just come you don't do anything and people just turn up to the show and they pay for the tickets and you know they're great public and you know everybody who like I, I, I met later in Edinburgh who, who went to the Reading Fringe they said this great thing <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, but, so in Moscow, I think it wouldn't work as a one month thing, but it would work as like maybe five days or like a week. We have something similar, like a punchline festival. Yeah, but I think well, it has a very different feel. It's kind of like uh, it's just stand up. It's just I, stand up. I, I, haven't, I haven't been to that festival yeah, because, because, we, because we were. We were at Fringe Pan, <laughs> the biggest star festival, comedy festival in the world. Yeah, fuck punchline. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're kidding. <laughs> but yeah, but we're not kidding. really. We, we would like to. Yes, no. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. no. Maybe. Yeah. But, I mean. but there are like other punchline festivals. For example, in Bratislava, there's a punchline yeah, festival. Yeah. In Ljubljana, there's a punchline festival. Yeah, we love those. I, I didn't refer to <laughs> the <laughs> Moscow. Yeah, just, just. No, I, I haven't been there. I cannot say anything yeah. like about it. But it's only, uh, only stand up comedy. Only stand up, but I think that. Uh, and improv. Yeah, uh, so to kind of incorporate and try to play of create a fringe feeling. I think that that would be sort of a centralized uh, festival with many things, with stand-up, with improv, with like 
clowning and like funny musicians like and comedy musician comedy poets we have those in russia you know in some quantities so i think it could it could work you know but uh, not uh, not as a, like a big big event where like everybody is basically uh, doing their own doing their own work it's just a centralized organization yeah because i i found that you know fringe uh, i think the most important thing if you're considering going to fringe is kind of like it's a place where you do everything yourself you invest in yeah. yourself you invest yes. in getting better how what time do you invest in preparation in flyering in like any as every aspect of preparation mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. every aspect of performing what you invest is what you get it's not like a festival you just turn up some people true true but some people just expect that they just expect to turn up at the fringe and just you know get audiences mis mysteriously you know like uh, or you know because I, I i i over two years i've that seen many doesn't work like that fringe stories yeah so this is this is different this is like kind of you invest in your own sort of progress like this yeah. is mostly about that i mean fringe. i think you could except for people who are sucking on barbie dolls i guess uh, i mean like have you seen this girl suck how she was sucking on barbie dolls five years ago to compare it to now i, I bet she was way worse Maybe, yeah. Maybe. She she yeah. probably got better in sucking on Barbie dolls. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. She she was like it, at first she was like biting them and like oh getting like how like and she she probably like performed before like she had performed before that like for four years yeah, and that yeah. was her first fringe five years ago yeah I mean but <laughs> but yeah back to Russia <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah we don't suck on Barbie dolls here sorry yeah. yes we kill them yeah <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, we'll lock, lock them up in basements with, with, uh, with movie chalk. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. So yeah, but uh, I think because we have a lot of like uh, different small festivals, like uh, theater festivals, in like Russia. art festivals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're all like separated. What do you think? Like, if I don't know, in Moscow, I don't, I don't think that central Moscow would be eager to uh, like um, to participate. I mean, like the whole central area of Moscow. Yeah, let's just. All the center of Moscow wouldn't participate. People just gather in the yards of their houses <laughs> and just go. We don't want any fucking art. Yes, this is the last thing we want. Art is we gay. Want, we art want is gay in Russia. We yes. want more more pavement repairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need more pavement repairs. That's for sure. <laughs> Please stop repairing our fucking pavements. They're just fine. Yeah. Uh, no, what I'm saying is that like uh, maybe outside of Moscow, if. Uh, I don't know. In the other reality, in other dimension, someone would propose an idea uh, to create a sort of uh, like center, you know, like a big area, like uh, yeah. a district, like outside of Moscow, you know, where like with. Uh, yeah. I was going more for Sochi Olympics, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just out of nowhere, build some hostels, hotels, yeah, you know, yeah. some uh, stages, uh, and just you know, like have fun, guys, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that would work, to be honest. Like we, the, we would need bars, you know. Everybody would need some like venues to, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, like, what if like Kaliningrad? Fucks. Yeah. Fuck say like nobody really needs it anyway. So yeah. Why so not just, use it? For why just need? Yeah. yeah. They have some film festivals there. Like, uh, what do you think? Like, if people could go to Kaliningrad and just occupy it, like for. Uh, art purposes. For art purposes, like yeah. for a week or two. I, like, I would go. I would go and do that. Me, me too. Actually, yeah. like me too, and I think a lot of people would uh, participate in that, like with uh, their plays, with their improv shows, and other stuff like poetry. Uh, writers would go yeah, there. I mean, yeah, it, uh, like reading book, we like whatever. Yeah. Like, because uh, the, the 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 Fringe Festival was originally wasn't like a Fringe. Fe why is it called a Fringe Festival? Because it's yeah. at the fringes of uh, like an inter international theater festival. You call it theater festival, arts festival, but it yeah. was mostly theater, right? Yeah. Uh, and like some people just wanted to perform, but they didn't get accepted. Yeah. So they kind of existed in the fringe. They just came to Edinburgh at the same time and started like doing small <laughs> venues and doing like shows for little money or free shows. Uh, Screw that! We're doing our own fringe with yeah. blackshing and hookers. <laughs> And now there's kind up. of the, the fringe of the fringe there was like some weird things like working class fringe and something else like at the fringe of the fringe and there is also a book festival at the same yes yeah, the same, yeah, yeah. same time so it's it, they all just stick stick together yeah like if you drop a oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> sorry yeah. some russian talk here yeah, yeah that's uh, we're russian it's yeah. uh, what you get we always want to drop something on somebody <laughs> Uh, occupy stuff yeah but a uh, fringe festival has been uh, out there for 47 years so yeah. it's like i don't know if it's uh, too late for russia to start something 
but we're like we're we're the country of art, ballet, theater, literature. Yeah. You know, like so, uh, and stand up is growing. You know, so why yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. Why, why not? not? I think I think I think it could it could it could work. And maybe yeah. even like international, since like uh, Kaliningrad is more accessible. For example, uh, it's more accessible for Europeans to to go there. Uh, I think it would be it would be a great place to do to, to do something like that. Yeah, maybe yeah. I haven't been there. So no, I propose Crimea, but I mean, like people would feel weird. But you know, this is like no it's, shit. <laughs> it's about it's about art. You know, like if you can't overcome your political. Do you understand if we go to Crimea to perform the, on a Russian Fringe Festival, that yeah. would be our last time <laughs> performing uh, any, on any Fringe Festival because the, they probably wouldn't let us to other countries like because we perform in Crimea. Oh, does it only work on Ukraine now? Uh, I think it does does, does work on, on Ukraine. We, we oh. won't, you know, I, uh, I don't think it will, it will be a problem. Yeah, yeah well. Yeah, well. Not okay, Crimea is. Crimea, Crimea. Yeah. Crimea, Crimea is. Is. Okay. It's nicer weather. <laughs> Since we're almost like wrapping up, it's really good. It's really <laughs> good to like for finish our podcast on Crimea. Like, what else did you expect? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we started with, we started with like, oh, we're kind of international, Russian, yeah. broad-minded people. Yeah, then we decided to take uh, like give give give, a, give away <laughs> give away Kaliningrad, and it's just like okay, okay Crimea. Okay, we're going to Crimea. We're going to Russian, Crimea. Russian yeah. French festival. Yes, yes. Russian French festival. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wears green. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wears green and everybody's really polite. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine doing a French festival somewhere in the middle of Siberia. <laughs> like, I mean, why not? Explore Russia. Come to come to Siberia. Enjoy our nature and art. Yeah. We have like three sections, like stand-up comedy, uh, I don't know, theater and, uh, I know, artful, uh, artful freezing to death or something like this. I don't know. Yes, uh, def uh, uh, defense against bears. Defense against bears, yeah. yeah. Drinking vodka properly, you know, not saying Nazdarovia for fuck's sake. <laughs> you know, because it's a Polish toast, not Russian toast. We just say, let's do it. Yeah, we we never say fucking Nazdarovia. We because just say Yobnyam. Yeah, Yobnyam, yes. Davai, yeah, yes. Like, fuck yeah. it. Yeah. Because we never wish another Russian, like, good health. Because, you know, like... Because it's just unreasonable. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Why? Everybody fucking dies at 56. Especially, especially Russian men. So there is no, yeah. there is no goddamn point. Yeah, but like, okay, let's not wrap it up on on Crimea. Um, uh, since like we we were there in August, it's already been like a whole month after. Uh, well, for you it's a bit more. I also like went to London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, like talking to you, it's been like a pleasure to uh, revisit, like reminisce and reminisce, reminisce. Jesus, that verb. Uh, reminisce on uh, like being at Fringe, and I remember like it's a really beautiful city, you know, to explore. Except for the weather, but you get used to it. Uh, like yeah. really old, really like uh, hill-wise, you know, all these small streets, small ar arches, small alleys, and stuff. Yeah. Great people. Uh, really liked it, and I would recommend every Russian to uh, like to learn English and uh, go there and uh, get this practice, like at least once, you know because um or any other comedian like around the yeah, world like even even going there to to watch shows it's yeah like i think it will broaden like everybody's higher yeah if, if two, yeah if two russian comedians can go to french yeah yeah then anybody like can can and should and must go because uh, i did 60 shows you did like, op yeah, like almost like well, yeah, yeah uh, uh, during during the french so you will never ever get uh, practice like that in uh, in stand up and uh, yeah i mean my my solo show wasn't the same by the end uh over the fringe yeah. so uh, if, yeah i had I had a great time there so yeah, yeah me too yeah so yeah so uh yeah definitely coming back next year and uh well uh, hopefully hope, with the yeah crew. hopefully with the whole english moscow comedy crew like uh hope to see you there i mean as well like <laughs> with us <Yeah. laughs> if we're not getting banned after this podcast <laughs> yeah but uh but yeah and also like yeah uh yeah maybe it's too late to say that but we're bringing uh, uh, uh we're bringing headliners from other countries every month to 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 moscow and i hope that maybe one time we'll we would be able to like create this sort of like little festival for uh, foreigners to come to Moscow. Or international. Sort yeah, of sort festival, of little international yeah. festival. It's at least like for five days, but it's really hard to get Russian visa. 
<laughs> even for, for Russians, <laughs> even for Russians to get a Russian visa, it's really hard. Like they don't want. Yeah, like they just say, why do you need it? <laughs> yeah, why do you need it? No, they don't want to let us. Yeah. Back, like they're. Like, why did you come back? You've seen life. What yes. The fuck? Yes. Get like get go go go. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Don't stay here. So anyhow, thank you very much uh, for listening to our weekly podcast, uh, our comedy podcast from. Uh, the heart of Moscow, from the heart of uh, Empire of Evil and stuff. Uh, uh, thanks to my guest Alek Denisov for coming here yeah, and thanks sharing. for having me. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Like any time, man. Uh, next week uh, we're probably gonna record some more stuff uh, with other people uh, about about comedy scene in Moscow, like what we do here because we perform here regularly in English. Can you believe it? We Russians perform here in English. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming and uh, you guys. I don't know. Stay hip. Stay tuned. And uh, well, I don't know. Hear us next time. I don't know. Like see us next time. I don't know. So anyhow, yeah. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> How do you cut? <laughs> oh, stop button. All right. That's my favorite button in Russian. Stop. <laughs> yes, in Russia we like to stop things. But we also break for nobody, just like space balls. In my next episode, I'm going to talk to Nate Eubanks, a comedian from Kansas who lives in Georgia, the country, not the state, and who came to perform in Moscow in late October. Tune in every week to learn more about lives of comedians, stand-up shows, and who knows what else from the heart of Moscow. My name is Denis Nikolin, aka Russian comedian, and I wish you all good health.